I probably don't need to tell you that this is the Proton S70, the National Car Maker's brand new sedan since the Persona, which was released back in 2016. Now, S70 ni nampak megah kan? Gagah dan orang akan cakap maybe macam kereta continental. Now, for this review of the S70, we're changing things up a little bit. Since we're all Malaysians, let's sprinkle some bahasa Malaysia here and there throughout this review and we hope you guys will enjoy it. Anyway, ini adalah ulasan Proton S70 kami. We have already talked about the looks of the S70 in our first look video, which can be found here, here, or somewhere around here. So let's talk about the S70 in general right now. This particular model, for one, is the range-topping flagship X model, which retails at 94,800 ringgit. This quartz black color is also exclusive to this model. So if you want the car in black, the flagship X is the only model you can get. I really quite like this black color for the S70 sebab biasanya kalau Proton keluarkan kereta hitam hanya untuk kegunaan government so the fact that never normal consumers can get the car in black now is really quite special if you want to save a little bit of money you can go for the flagship model which just loses out the sunroof as well as the dash cam for 89,800 ringgit and that's a really good price for the car that you're getting there's also the premium for 79,800 ringgit and the base executive for 73,800 ringgit. Tapi untuk aku lah kan, aku really suggest korang dapatkan flagship atau flagship X model sebab dua model ni sahaja yang ada ADAS which is Advanced Driver Assistance System. The fact that the premium and executive doesn't get any form of ADAS is really quite puzzling because even much more affordable cars now has at the very least busuk-busuk pun lah AEB Autonomous Emergency Braking tak ada feature ni agak sedih untuk kereta yang baru keluar di tahun ni and tahun lepas in the case of the S70 so with that in mind as far as I am concerned there is only the flagship or flagship X model of the S70 that is worth considering unless you really want to save the money then I guess the executive and premium are decent options. Dari tepi, kita memang boleh nampak yang kereta S70 ni panjang macam kereta C segment seperti yang Proton pasar kan. Tetapi for myself, I consider this a B plus segment car. After all, it's just the same platform as the X50 SUV which is marketed as a B segment model. Granted, there are some features of the S70 which I would really consider a C7 sedan feature but for the most part we cannot escape the fact that this is still based on a B segment platform so in terms of space interior space especially you do feel like it's not quite there as a C7 sedan now one thing that I like about the S70 is the fact that it has keyless entry although I cannot do this I have to press on the button to lock and unlock the car and one thing I don't like is the fact that this is only available on the driver side at the passenger side for the front door, I cannot have keyless entry which is a little bit of a shame. Bahagian belakang S70 ni memang lawa bagi I sebab light bar ni nampak cantik and then bila I unlock atau lock kereta ni, dia macam ada light show belakang ni and I suka lah. Dia nampak macam cheap to some people, I'm sure. Tapi untuk I, I rasa ni gimmick yang menarik. And then bila kita buka boot kereta ni adalah 500 liter of space which is more than enough especially for a sedan untuk balik kampung ke nak pergi mana-mana ke 500 liter of space good enough tapi one thing I don't like is when I close the boot sounds a bit cheap lah when I close it and then it sounds like yeah I'd also like to touch on the S70's engine a little bit this is a 1.5 liter 3 cylinder turbo engine as you can hear for yourself Bunyi macam engine diesel lah So tak berapa sedap untuk dengar Tapi once you masuk dalam kereta You memang tak dengar langsung engine tu And mungkin bila kita accelerate kuat Dapat rasa sikit lah gegaran tu Tapi for the most part The isolation antara cabin dengan engine Is very very good Once you step inside the S70 You really feel like you're in a modern C segment car Because this interior quality The perceived quality at the very least Really does fit the C segment positioning of the S70 You've got a full digital meter, a large 12.3 inch infotainment system and soft touch material is everywhere like here, the steering wheel is nice and plush and this part of the door is hard plastic but it doesn't look that bad or feel that bad which is good. The center tunnel here is also very well designed. I can put bottles here, here and even this storage space is nice 
and deep. You can put a lot of things inside here. Another thing worth mentioning is the fact that it has a wireless charger built right here. Put it there and the phone will start charging and there's also a key logo here and this is not to charge the key as far as I can tell but it's for when your battery of the key is not that strong you just put it over there and you can still start your car. Throughout the cabin of the car like right here as well as right here you've got these Songcat motifs which really gives it a Malaysian touch to the interior design of the S70. Let's talk a little bit about the infotainment system of the S70. This large 12.3 inch screen looks great and it works great, it's very smooth. But again, as I've mentioned before with all of Proton models, it doesn't have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. There are news and rumors of it possibly being implemented. I mean, some say yes, some say no, but for all I care, you should get a product based on what it currently offers. And at this very moment, there is no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, so keep that in mind if you're thinking of purchasing the S70. Yes, there is this QD link, but as I've shown before in my review of the X90, it doesn't work particularly well. It works in a pinch, yes, but tak best lah nak pakai ni. Besides that, kalau nak masuk kereta ni ke sport mode ke, eco mode ke, you can buat macam ni. Tarik screen, pilih dari situ. Tak ada butang kat center console ni untuk tukar. Sebab ni adalah model flagship X S70, dia ada sunroof juga. Tapi kalau you nak buka sunroof ni, tak ada butang kat sini. Apa you perlu buat, masuk setting, pergi ke vehicle, pilih sunroof, tekan open. Tak best lah kena buat banyak step macam ni hanya untuk buka sunroof ni. Granted, you can tell Proton to open and close the sunroof. Hi Proton, close the sunroof. It doesn't work. Why? Hi Proton. What's up? Close the sunroof. Sure, it's closing. Yeah, so boleh macam tu, tapi as you can see, it didn't work the first time. So yeah. Besides that, it also has a manual cover. It's not automated, so just you know keep that in mind. On the bright side, at least the 360 camera of the S70 is high quality. This is the front of the car left side, the right side, the back side, and there's even a, you know, this 360 thing which is quite cool. How about the seat of the S70? Well, in my opinion, it's better than the X50 and it's definitely better than the X90. The seat base is long enough to provide adequate support, though I do wish there's a little bit more thigh support for those longer drives. But overall, pretty decent seat that can hug my body quite well as well, which I like. Seat belakang S70 ni surprisingly sangat selesa. Lambar support especially very nice and boleh nampak lah banyak ruang kaki and this has been adjusted to my driving position as you can see. Plenty of legroom. That being said, it does feel a little bit more cramped here compared to say the Honda Civic because that car just has a lot of legroom. Also, I am not particularly tall as I've said in all of my videos. Unfortunately enough, I'm only about 165cm so your mileage may vary depending on how tall you are and how tall your driver is. But the lumbar support, plenty of leg space and even this center armrest makes this a pretty comfortable place to be in. Kalau nak balik kampung ke apa ke, selesa. Oh and kalau nak charge phone ke, tablet ke, ada USB-C port sini dengan USB-A. Confirm cukup untuk balik kampung. Now that we're done with the interior of the S70, jom ambil kereta ni dan pusing-pusing around KL. So, we are driving the Proton S70 now in heavy, heavy KL traffic and this is, as I've said before, this is really a comfortable car. As Proton is positioning this as a C-segment sedan, it really does ride like a C-segment sedan. It can soak up road bumps very well and jalan rata ke tak rata ke, this car can handle it very very smoothly. The handling of the S70 is also very good. Although there is a bit of body roll as I throw the car into corners at higher speeds, it does feel stable enough still for me to confidently take the corner without worry of losing control. While I wouldn't say it has a sporty handling, it does handle itself very well and Proton's signature rider handling is still very much present on the S70. 
The NVH of the S70 is also very much like a C7 sedan. In terms of noise, the wind noise is kept to a minimum very very well, unlike the X50 if I might add. And road noise is a little bit loud but I can attribute this to probably the lack of sound insulation in the wheel arch for example. I'm going at about 85 km right now and you can hear some of the road noise. At national speed limit of 110 km per hour, it does get a bit too loud but overall I'd say it's still not too bad especially for a car at this price point. As for vibration, okay, engine dia memang rasa sikit gegaran dia ke dalam cabin but only if I put my foot down on the throttle pedal right now. Sikit lah, it's still not bad in my opinion. Now let's talk about the performance of the S70. It has a 1.5 liter MPI turbo engine that outputs 150 PS and 226 Nm of torque. This is the very same engine used in the non-flagship X50 models. While I would have personally preferred the higher powered TGDI version of this engine, there is no mistaking that this is still a very fast car, especially again at this price point. Aku tekan je acceleration pedal. 80 km per hour. There is still a nice surge of power and torque pushing me back to the seat. But I do have one issue with the throttle response of the S70. There is too much power at the lower end from what I can tell. Let's say I'm at the traffic light and I accelerate just like how I would normally would in a normal car and for some reason the front wheels would start spinning. Imagine I'm at the traffic light right now and I put my foot down. Not sure if you guys can hear that but the wheel spin, it feels a bit unnatural. It's as if I just got a brand new manual car, I'm still trying to get used to it and I just dump the clutch and just makes me look a little bit like a new driver which I am definitely not. To solve this issue, aside from Proton changing the throttle response or anything like that, I have to be a bit more gentle with the throttle and if I do that, there is absolutely no wheel spin which is good but also the fact that you have to change your driving behaviour to match the S70 to me just doesn't feel that nice. Speaking of being gentle on the throttle pedal, the same thing can be said for the brake pedal as well. The biting point of the brake pedal is quite high up so you really have to get used to this higher action and when I first got the car I actually surprised myself because the car was jerking because I, I didn't expect the brake to be that sensitive. Tapi kalau kau tekan brake pedal to lembut sikit and no treat it like how we would treat a pet for example and you'll be rewarded with a nice smooth braking action and I do like the higher brake point in more aggressive driving because I can modulate the braking a little bit better. Last but not least is the ADAS of the S70 and this is absolutely my favourite feature of this sedan. It feels a lot like the ADAS of the X90 which is high praises for a car at this price point whether in the B segment or the C segment market. The adaptive cruise control can feel a little bit jerky in a traffic jam but when I'm cruising on the highway, it can modulate the throttle very smoothly and much like a normal human driver. The lane keep assist can also keep the car central in the lane very well and even as I'm approaching a corner like I am right now, I don't have to put in much input and the car can negotiate the corner all on its own. Of course, my hands still have to be on the steering wheel because this is still just really a level 2 semi-autonomous driving. Jadi itulah ulasan pemanduan Proton S70 ni. I really like how this car drives and aside from the overly sensitive throttle response, I think this is just a very nice car to drive. Just like a C7 sedan, no doubt. Ah, yeah, lupa nak cakap pasal fuel consumption kereta ni. On average, I dah bawa kereta ni beberapa hari dah and I can get about 11 km per liter which is not that bad considering the fact that I do quite a bit of spirited driving, let's call it that. After all is said and done, best ke S70 ni? Worth it ke nak beli Proton S70 ni? Yes, absolutely, definitely. At least for the flagship or flagship X model sebab yang tu je yang ada ADAS 
untuk I lah from 89,800 ringgit to 94,800 ringgit the value for money yang S70 offer ni memang sangat-sangat bagus kalau you nak shop untuk B7 sedan Toyota Vios ke Honda City ke really test drive the S70 and see how this car compares to its Japanese rivals even if you're shopping for a much more expensive C7 sedan like the Honda Civic you should see just how the S70 compares because the value for money here is simply unrivaled Yes, it's not perfect. The throttle response is not great for me. The lack of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is not great. And here and there, the refinement of this car, to me at least, is still not quite up to, say, the Honda Civic's level. But again, at this price point, you can do much, much worse. And that is our review of the Proton S70. Ini memang kereta yang sangat best. And kalau you nak beli, really, consider test driving it first to see what you think. Like this video if you like it, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and as always, stay tuned for more good stuff to come here on this channel and nextreef.com.